So, my grandmother used to tell us this super scary story, which honestly, I don't even know if she wanted to frighten us to death, but it sure worked. She had grown up as a young child in some remote village in Indonesia, moving to the States in her later teens. There was a legend in her village that naughty children who disobeyed their parents would be taken away by a winged creature in the middle of the night. I don't know about you, but if I thought staying on Santa's good list wasn't reason enough to not misbehave, then the fear of being plucked out of your bed as you slept would sure do it. Apparently, according to my grandmother, she once saw the creature soaring past her window in the middle of the night. She has been quite poorly and unable to sleep, so her mother had her moved her bed over closer to the window so she could have some fresh air and enjoy looking up at the moon and the stars at night. Being a fairly small and poor village, there had been a bit of a scandal when one of the farmers allegedly told that somebody was stealing his fruit. Nobody truly admitted to the crime, and it seemed they had a thief in their midst. That same night, as grandmother was looking out the window, she saw the child stealer, as they had named the creature. It was around the size of an adult human, but its skin was a bright color and completely hairless. It had two huge black wings and a face that was reminiscent of a rodent with two huge pointy ears. It gave the appearance of a half-human, half-bat-like creature. She said it made this horrendous high-pitched scream and entered the open window of the home opposite. Too frightened to see what happened next, she tells me she huddled down under her own covers, having closed her window quietly. Although she knew that she hadn't been naughty, there was no way that she wanted to be spotted by this thing. And of course, the next morning, there was utter panic in the village, as the small boy from the house opposite of her had been taken, vanished with just a pile of stolen, rotting fruit under his bed. It scared her enough to go through her entire life as a law-abiding citizen, and she installed the same sense of moral code onto my own mother, and then onto us. This story alone was enough to keep my siblings and I out of trouble as kids, even though we were in the U.S. There was no way in hell we were risking the wrath of the child stealer. It might be an old Indonesian tale, but it's something that has stuck with me, even now as an adult. Currently, I am a nighttime security guard at a mall. For the most part, it's a pretty easy job. We don't tend to get a lot of trouble. And to be honest with you, it's mostly just a matter of patrolling through the building, making sure no would-be shoplifters have hidden themselves away and to be on site when late or very early deliveries come in. Piece of cake. It's fairly new, so there's no creepy stories that can go along with it, unfortunately. However, we do have some high-end stores, but nothing worth holding up, and all the money gets banked every night. We've never had any major raids or robberies, which is why when the alarm system started going nuts one night over by the sporting goods area, I wasn't too concerned. Sometimes, not often, but it does happen, a raccoon or some other small animal gets into the delivery bay and sets off the motion sensors. That's about the scariest thing I had come across so far, as that thing was pretty big. However, it just ran out, and I opened the back up, having found no trash to rifle through. So I was expecting the same kind of deal this time. Headed over, coffee in hand, and how worried I was. I turned off the alarms and entered into the store. At first, when I heard the fluttering, I thought, crap, a bird might be harder to scare off initially than a raccoon who just ran out. A bird will usually be a lot more scared and start making a mess of things. Once I got into the back where all the deliveries are sorted, the flapping got louder. 
and then I heard a sound that almost made me drop my coffee. It was this terrible, unhuman, ungodly shrieking noise. Again, I wasn't quite frightened, yes. I was startled, as I was expecting a bird noise, not that. But at this point, I wasn't what I would call scared. At least not yet. I hit the lights, still fully expected to be face to face with, I don't know, maybe a large owl or a pigeon. What I instead saw actually did make me drop my coffee and break my mug, reaching for my gun out of reflex. This thing was no bird. It was actually around the size of a large child, maybe a 10 to 12 year old child to be exact, completely black. If it hadn't been flapping about, I would have sworn it was a very small would-be robber. The body was very human, except its flesh was jet black and had very human-like arms and legs. But the head and the wings, yes, this thing had wings. It was very reminiscent of a bat. It had tiny yellow beady eyes, very pointy ears, think like an elf, except longer, very exaggerated and pointed, and very sharp looking teeth, like little knives. Honest to God, it was some sort of bat-human creature. It made this awful screaming noise. And at that point, in my fight or flight, I had two options. The first would be to shoot it. The second, open the delivery door back up. And you know what? I'm not a murderer, even if this thing was some kind of monster. You see, it wasn't trying to attack me. The scream seemed more like it was panicked, probably because it was trapped, and it was right over by the door. So I released it, and the door opened up, and it flew straight out. After all that, it truly scared the hell out of me. I have no idea what the hell that was, what kind of animal it was, or what it was doing, or how it got in there. But I can confidently say, I never felt like it wanted to attack me or try and hurt me even though it looked pretty vicious and evil and like it could have torn me in pieces. I just think it was maybe scared. I don't know. It still boggles my mind to this day. One thing I never did was actually get to see the security footage of it. I'm sure it's lying around somewhere. I like to take a run in the morning before heading off to work since I am currently a teacher. This means getting up super early, and often when it is still pretty dark. Luckily, most of the tracks and streets around here are fairly well lit, even through the parkland, so it's not often I find myself running in total darkness. One winter morning, however, I desperately needed to get a stretch in before a long day ahead of teaching and Christmas pageant rehearsals. So, I was up even earlier than usual, and it was pretty dark out, despite the streetlights. I see all sorts of wildlife on my runs, and have been scared to death many a time by something running across my path. But, I am in their domain, when it is still officially nighttime, so I only have myself to blame, I guess. There are no predators here, though. I am not foolish enough to go running alongside bears or even mountain lions. To be honest, the biggest thing I have ever run across is a possum. They can be sneaky little guys, but again, never bothered me. More like, hey, get out of here. But on this day, something felt weird from that moment I got onto the path. So you know, there's about half a mile through the trees, which isn't really lit, until you get back onto the track. This is due to the tall timber. It kind of blocks in a lot of light, especially the angle in which the sun rises. I have ran it so many times I am confident anyway, but I always have the light on my phone too. On this morning, it was as if I could just tell as soon as I hit the trees that something wasn't going to happen. But I would never have expected to be what actually happened. 
and I could hear commotion overhead, up in the top of the trees that I ran past. Now, there are often birds about to start their day, and squirrels even angry with me, quote-unquote, waking them up. It made me not so concerned. But whatever was going on did seem to be reaching some sort of crescendo. There was a ton of racket. And then, almost like something out of a cartoon, there was a whooshing noise, and in front of me stood what I can only describe to you as a Batman, literally. I mean, obviously it wasn't Batman. And for just a split second, bearing in mind that he was only illuminated by my cell phone light, I thought it was some loon dressed up as Batman, thinking it was a little early for Halloween. That freaked me out, as I thought maybe I was about to be robbed, when instead of asking me for my wallet, it made this weird high-pitched screaming, spreading its wings. I distinctly remember this. If this is a dude in a costume, he must know somebody in Hollywood, because that thing is super realistic looking. Black and scaly, yellow eyes, sharp little teeth. My mind began to try and compute that this thing in front of me couldn't possibly be a person in cosplay. The body was a weird dark red color, and it was not quite as tall as me. It had human-like arms and legs, but now looking at the face more and more, it was part man and part bat. It couldn't have been a mask. It was too realistic. It made that awful screeching hiss again and began to flap its wings. It shot up so fast that I didn't even see the direction that it went off in. I hadn't even really looked closely at its feet when I shone the phone light down to where it had been. There were claw marks. It appeared to have some sort of talons. It looked strong enough to pick up a small dog possibly and carry it away. I ran home, possibly racing as fast as I could. Later on, I found myself running on alternate routes and never went back on the same route. Now and ever since then, I only run once the sun has risen. It's an encounter that will stay with me for a long time. Unfortunately, there's only few people I can tell because, well, due to the nature of the story, who's going to believe me? Thank you for listening. Hi. Just wanted to chime in and say I'm a huge fan of the show, and I wanted to send to you a report of my own. I was driving home one night, late after work. A little FYI on me. I work in a hotel, what they call the evening shift or second shift, which means I finish up right about 2 a.m., or as soon as my coworker gets there, which sometimes isn't until 2.15. Since the roads are usually packed in the daytime, it is a quite built-up area, but at 2 a.m., I finally have the place to myself. It's a fairly short commute, so I was really only around 10 minutes from home and bed, when something caught my eye out of the window. Just because I'm the only car on the road at the time doesn't mean I drive recklessly. You gotta go careful at night, especially considering I've had deer jump out in front of my car. So, when I saw something fly into the trash cans, something that looked huge, I made an effort to slow down, drive past, and get a look. I will never forget what stepped out. It was around the size of a small teenager, maybe a large child, a middle schooler maybe, covered in thick black fur, it appeared, and large claws and talons. It was the weirdest looking thing I'd ever seen. It appeared to have a snout and reddish amber glowing eyes. I didn't see any teeth, but it had behind it the shape that appeared to be these massive wings. They looked exactly like a bat's, except more tattered. It was like I was looking at a gorilla with the head of a dog almost and bat-like wings. It's not a super accurate description, but it's the best one I can muster up. What I can't accurately tell you is this thing was incredibly ugly. 
I don't know what kind of animal it was, but it almost reminded me of a creature you'd see off the movie, Army of Darkness. If you've never seen that movie, well, I strongly suggest you watch The Evil Dead, because they are good films. Anyway, I craned on, and sort of went, and it disappeared. Anyway, I wanted to know if you've ever received ports of anything similar. Again, I've never seen something like that in my life, and although I do enjoy good horror stories, I had no intention to actually live in one, so you can imagine how scared out of my life I am. Hello. I'm sure you get sent a lot of stories detailing all sorts of horrible things happening to people, but one common theme that I've heard among some of your stories, not all of them, but just a handful, is this whole concept of Indian burial grounds. I've seen some comments on your channel that people dismiss the whole idea as being this stupid creepypasta cliche, but I'm here to tell you right now that they are adamantly very real. I cannot express this enough. Let me explain. Where I live, I live on a bunch of land. And in fact, because of the land I live on, there's an old, well, what used to be Indian burial ground, far out. And because I live on kind of like a slope that almost leads into a small valley, I have a perfect view of seeing where this monument used to be. Now, I know it's kind of hard to understand, but there's really not that much there now. The only thing that really remains is these large stone pillars that are very crude in design and probably about 18 feet if I'm guessing. I'm not joking. And what I see upon them is exactly what I'm writing to you about. Sometimes in the evening time, I'll see these large gargoyle-like figures perched on top. They are perfectly still like statues. But the issue being is that they are not always there. Sometimes they are there, and sometimes they are not. I've gone over to that area, hiking and exploring, and it's very uncomfortable, to say the least. The entire place, not just the old burial ground, but even the land around it, has a very weird energy to it. It's a feeling. It's a very powerful feeling. It's kind of like you're walking into a field with a bunch of magnets, there's a lot of static and electricity. It's very hard for me to describe accurately. It's a place you would just have to go by yourself so you can get an idea of what it was. It's a place you would just have to go to by yourself just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. When I bought this land many years back, I was told that these old stone pillars are the remnants of what used to be a burial ground and that it probably was a good idea if I stayed away from it. At the time, I just assumed it was a bunch of hogwash, but then again, I can't refute the feelings that I get when I walk around it. When I'm on my back porch, I have a perfect view because, as I said, the land slopes down into almost a tiny valley, and it sits right down there. If I had to say, I'd say it's probably between 300 to 500 yards away from my back porch. There are trees in between but it's enough that I can see the stone pillars and the tops of them. Again, I want to get back to the real reason that I'm running to you, but I have to set up the backstory to know that this place is eerie, and I have yet to walk around this place at nighttime. The one time that I nearly did, it was evening time, and it was years ago when I was exploring the area. I kept having this awful feeling like I was being watched, like somebody was directly behind me, like they were going to reach out for me and grab me, but nothing ever happened. I like to say that I have eyes like an owl, where I feel like I can turn my head a total 180 degrees and keep a good eye around me at all times. But even then, with that extra sixth sense that I like to say I have, I still felt like I was in danger. So now, I try and stay far away from that area. The weird thing here is that I'm seeing these large gargoyle figures perched on top of these stone pillars. There are four stone pillars in total, and it's usually I only ever see these four gargoyle figures perched on each one, or I don't at all. It's never that I only see one or two, or even three. 
It's either all four or not, and they come and go. I'm not trying to give you or feed you a fiction story. When I go out there on my porch sometimes, and they're there, it's like I'm looking at statues. They're perfectly still, and I don't think they're living beings, but I don't know why they disappear and reappear. But here's where it gets creepier. Sometimes at night, I'll hear this screaming, this loud screeching screaming. It's almost like if you were to listen to a real life dragon or an eagle amplified by 10 and then put through some sort of distorted filter. And sometimes at night, I'll see dark shapes moving around. It's really creepy out here. Trust me when I say that I'd be the first person to laugh at you and tell you witchcraft, lol, big deal. But I don't know. Now that I've been living in it, my mind has kind of changed. I know natives in general probably did some crazy freaky stuff to their burial grounds. I don't know for the sake of protection or what. Or maybe it's just that their magic died with them and beings of different realms have come to protect it. I don't know. This is all just loose speculation. But whatever it is, I cannot deny the things and the horrors that are living around that burial ground. I understand it sounds cheesy, but again, I'm here to adamantly tell you that these things are very real. In fact, I invite anybody to go exploring in any burial ground and for them to tell me that they're not sensing anything weird or seeing dark shapes or things that shouldn't be there out of the corner of their eyes. I almost sometimes feel like I'm in danger, but luckily from where I live and even where my back porch is, even though I have a perfect view of the entire establishment, I guess you could call it, I still sometimes feel like I might be vulnerable. Although I don't really feel anything come up to my house, so it's nothing like that. So I'm either having a very schizophrenic lucid hallucination of these figures that look just like gargoyles, or potentially there might be something much more evil at work here. This isn't my story, but actually one of my older cousins. He has a really crazy wild survival story of when he was serving and training in the military back in 1982. At the time, he and a few other individuals had been hand-selected for a survival training where they were to be put out in different areas of the Ozark Mountains and had to survive for seven days with just minimal, basic supplies. Well, that's not the scary part. What is, is that he describes to me that he was attacked by what he says a large, half-man, half-bat creature that nearly picked him up off the ground and almost flew away with him. But he was able to break free, and what he said cut this thing's foot off with a large bowie knife that he had. He obviously survived and only fell about 20 feet, is what he said. He never told anybody of this encounter, at least anybody in the military, because nobody would believe him. And then years later, as he began living life, he started to hear things more like Bigfoot encounters and stuff like that happening out in the Ozarks and how it just seems to be a general hot spot for paranormal and weird things to happen. You see, at the time, he knew nothing of Bigfoot or anything out of that realm of normal reality. So this was quite spooky to hear. And besides, my cousin is very straight to the point and doesn't have time for BS. It is completely out of character for him to make up a story like this. And when he tells me this story, he's as serious as a heart attack. You can see the expression in his eyes as he's describing what exactly this thing looked like. He just tells me that it was a half man, half bat. There's no other way to describe it. And he said this thing was larger than him. He said it came out from the trees or so he thought. And because he was in an undisclosed location in the mountains, and he was by himself, there were no other witnesses around to disprove or prove what he had to say. He said though, during those seven days, besides that whole account, he hardly if ever saw any other animals, and actually at the time, went pretty hungry, because he had a hard time foraging for food, and even finding much meat to eat on. So that was really his excitement for the entire trip. Since him telling me this, I've tried to do some of my own research, 
but I couldn't really find much, other than your traditional alien stuff and Bigfoot stuff along the entire Ozark area. Now, I don't know if I really necessarily disbelieve him, because, like I told you, he's a very serious individual and doesn't have time to make up stories, and he doesn't really have anything to gain from it either. He's not looking for notoriety or fame of any kind. In fact, he even asked that I keep his identity anonymous, just so nothing can be traced back to him, and fear that he gets ridiculed, or worse, especially in today's cancel culture. He has a reputation and a lot riding on it, so he couldn't bear to have his story known publicly, unless it was shrouded in anonymity. That's the only condition he gave me to be able to share this story with you. Had this happened to another individual, who wasn't near as tough or hardcore as my cousin. They might not have lived or survived to tell the tale. Anyway, that's my cousin's story. I hope you enjoy it. Do with it what you will. To this day, I am not quite sure if I exactly saw something or not, but I certainly cannot explain the phenomena Last year, I was with my brothers on our way to Las Vegas for a one-week vacation where we planned on binge drinking, some gambling, and debauchery. We were driving there, and if anybody has ever driven through Nevada or any of the southwestern United States, you would know that it is a vast wasteland of desert and nothingness. It's important for me to mention this first, because mistaking something being there and not being there it's pretty hard to do when your backdrop is a stale, plain desert. Because I was in the back driver's seat, I couldn't tell you what highway we were on or what even road we were going down. And quite frankly, I don't really care because that doesn't matter in the story. I believe at this point though, we were probably a couple of hours outside of Vegas and we were on a long stretch of road as is much of the state. To my left was kind of a rocky outcropping. Not quite a big mountain or a cliff, but just a lot of rocky like hills. I might be terrible at describing the landscape, but if you need a visual, just simply Google Maps a random highway in Nevada so you kind of understand what I'm talking about. The landscape really doesn't change much. Anyway, I'm looking out and I see what looks to be a large black shape sitting on a boulder far away from the road. My first impression was that it was some large gargoyle or something. I remember thinking how weird it was because I was like, who in their right mind would place a gargoyle out here? I thought they belonged on gothic style buildings and things of that nature and downtown government buildings and cities. It was pretty large too. Even from far away, I could tell the boulder and itself was larger than the car but I just assumed it was a statue of some sort. It wasn't moving at all and appeared to be perfectly still. I even nudged my brother to the right of me and said, look, I didn't know they had a gargoyle out here. His reaction was just kind of like, huh, maybe the natives out here built it for protection. Our conversation probably lasted a whole two minutes and then we continued on with life and the drive to Vegas. The same area that we were driving by had a section of specific houses in a tiny row, maybe like three or four, and a notable broken down old blue Ford pickup in front. Not far away was the boulder in question with the gargoyle statue on top of it, or what I believed to be. We continued our trip to Vegas and did our week long vacation. We drove back from Vegas on that exact same road and I just also happened to be on the passenger seat back seat this time, looking at the same direction on the way home. We came across this exact stretch of road, and without me even thinking, I just happened to be looking out in the same area. I knew it was it, because my mind immediately recognized that old beat up Ford pickup truck, the blue one that I had just mentioned, that I saw a week prior. Then. I saw the few houses that were in the same line and row, and realized this is the exact spot we passed. However, when I glanced over at the large boulder, the gargoyle looking statue was gone. My stomach immediately nodded up. It was just too strange for me. 
I want to clarify with you that at the distance we were at, this statue, assuming that's what it was, would be far too large for it to be just randomly taken down and away. I mean, it is possible, but why would there be a large gargoyle statue sitting on top of a boulder in the middle of the desert by a few old houses? It is very possible that this is exactly what it was, but if my memory serves me correct, gargoyle statues are much more gray since they are made of stone. This was shaped like a gargoyle statue, or what my mind would depict as one, based on statues on gothic buildings, but it was very dark in color, and not like gray, like stone. Its color was vastly different from the brown and tan rock it was perched on top of, even though it was perfectly still, looking out in our direction. I never once would have thought it to be real or even move. And no, I never once saw eye shine or eye glow or anything weird like that. Just a big dark shape. Its wings were even folded up, just like in traditional gargoyle fashion. I did not say anything to anybody in the car when I saw that it wasn't there. But I will give you more of a size comparison. Even though we were a distance away, the boulder was clearly larger than the Ford pickup truck that I could see. And when we drove by the first time, this statue, or whatever it was that it was perched on top of that boulder, was also larger than the boulder, meaning that the statue was huge, maybe 20 to 30 feet in height. Listen, I'm not trying to exaggerate details here. I'm trying to give you as accurate information as I can recall. I don't really think much of it because even though it was weird and it did creep me out, life just went on and I never thought to tell anybody about it. After listening to your channel, I thought maybe I should chime in with my own weird experiences. After all, I've heard many instances of things going bump in the desert, whether it be creatures or things that fly. My father just recently shared some very interesting information with me when we were sitting down watching a movie. The movie in question is Army of Darkness. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie or not, but it's great. But that's not why I'm writing to you. My father and I were sitting down watching this movie, and there's a scene that's in the latter part of the movie where this flying demon grabs the girl and flies off with her to take her to be transformed into this evil being. As we're watching this movie, my dad starts acting funny during the scene, and I look over at my dad and ask him what's up. He literally had to get up and leave the room. I could tell he was visibly shaken and pale and didn't look good. I followed him and asked him what was wrong, and he told me he would tell me later. Anyway, the night ended and we finished the movie and he was outside on the deck smoking a cigarette. That's when I decided to pursue and ask what was that all about earlier. He told me, Son, you probably won't believe me if I told you this. But I assured my father. I told him I loved him and that I would believe him if he told me, whatever it was. Obviously something about the movie was really bothering him and I wanted to know. My father spent a lot of time in Australia 20 years ago when he was married to his first wife of 9 years. She, unfortunately, passed away from breast cancer well over 10 years ago, and my father would later on move to the east coast of the United States where we still are. I don't know if he was a legal citizen over there, but he spent years doing all sorts of stuff. I don't know what his line of work was, and I don't exactly know what it is that he did but he has told me some of the other adventures of him exploring the Australian outback and the other times he's almost been killed by some of the crazy wildlife that's out there. Crocodiles, jellyfish, all sorts of stuff. He even has a story about meeting some indigenous people after a five day long rendezvous in the outback and getting lost. I know, the man has seen some things, but I wasn't really expecting him to tell me what he did. I almost didn't believe him at first, if it wasn't for him being so shaken. I bring up the outback because this is what he brought up. He told me during his time of exploring out there and driving around, he came across a large pit in the earth is how he described it. He said it looked to be man-made, 
but was easily about 50 feet in diameter. Quite literally, a large hole that you could not see the bottom of, aka a bottomless pit. He said as he approached it, this flying demon flew out and nearly grabbed onto him and almost pulled him in, nearly dragging him down into the pit. He managed to push away somehow in the nick of time and avoid falling into this hole. The flying demon flew off in the sky past the mountains that were around him. When we were watching the movie and that scene came on, he said the creature that appeared on the screen looked nearly identical to what he saw come out of that pit. In size, stature, color, look, everything. That scene immediately brought him back to the exact moment and forced him to leave the room. My dad's not usually like that, and he's not really bothered by much. He's a firm and staunch believer in science and things that can be proven physically. So for him to tell me a tale like this was a little unnerving. I remember him shaking with his cigarette in his hand as he's explaining this to me, that it will always have a lasting effect in my memory. The area that he found this pit in was probably a good 50 plus miles away from any civilization. He was out there, and when I say out there, I mean it. You have to understand that he would spend days, if not weeks at a time, just going back there exploring, getting himself lost on several occasions. He's come into contact with all sorts of dangerous and poisonous venomous animals. But this recollection of events really shook him more than anything else. I asked him if he thinks hell really exists and that if this thing came from hell. He told me he never believed in hell and was a firm atheist, but now he's more open-minded and says he doesn't know. I almost wonder if that pit was an entrance to hell or some sort of cavern system in which this thing lived in, but even he didn't know. Anyway, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, but to give you a point of reference, especially if you're going to read this to your audience, would be to Google Army of Darkness Flying Demon, and that should show you exactly what we saw in the movie and what my dad claims to have come out of the pit. The surrounding was pretty much just bush and openness with some mountains in the background. This pit was literally found in the middle of nowhere. My father never unveiled to me the province of Australia that he was in, because I personally am not too familiar with the geography of that country. But I know that Australia is humongous, and the outback stretches for so much mileage and area. I know there's other talk about things living in the outback, such as indigenous tribes and all sorts of stuff, and there's so much range for survivability, even amongst the harsh climates and dangerous venomous animals that live there. Certain people thrive in that environment. My father certainly did in his younger days, even though he had this hair-raising story like this one. My story takes place in early October 2004. Listen, this is a little bit emotionally taxing for me to share, so I hope you can bear with me in case I get lost. I did lose a close friend during this incident and I don't take it very lightly. He was murdered by whatever animal we happened to encounter that day. What it was, I'm not sure. Even the police report listed that he had fallen to his death, but weren't sure how. During this time, I was spending a lot of my free time hiking with some other close friends of mine, namely one of my best friends, Richard. He was only two years older than I, and we spent weekends trekking into the wilderness building up our endurance and stamina for more intensive hikes. This particular incident, we were hiking on Mount St. Helens, which is in Washington state, for those that are uneducated. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound that snarky in a condescending way. I just don't expect you or anybody you might share this with to automatically know the United States. We had planned a weekend where him and I were going to climb this mountain and reach the summit. I'm not exactly sure what happened along the way. We got to a section on the trail where we began hearing rustling and loud noises from the timber near us, like something big was moving. We stopped to see, and out up in the trees came this large giant bat, or so it looked like at first, but was covered in thick matted hair. It was humongous, much larger than a bat, 
and the longer Richard and I spent looking at it, we could make out more details that it looked to be more like a giant gorilla with wings that flew right at us. Richard and I took off fleeing for our lives as this massive bat gorilla thing, human, took aim at us. It propelled itself right at Richard and grabbed him up underneath his arms, picked him up and started flying up in the air with him. I'm screaming bloody murder and the sheer disbelief of what is actually happening before me. This thing flies a little ways over a steep, rocky embankment and drops him about 80 feet and he falls to his death, landing broken on the rocks beneath. I really don't like to get into detail beyond this because it's too traumatic for me to recall. I'm going to leave it at that. I saw everything, blood and all. I wish this encounter could be longer, but it was so traumatic for me that I feel like my brain blocked out a lot of the vital and visual details. Even writing you as much as I have about this encounter, I feel like has been enough. My understanding from what police told me is that he died on impact, which was evident with the way he landed and what I saw. Maybe I'll contact you at a different time when I feel more comfortable explaining things out in more detail. I'm sorry. I've seen my fair share of weird things in my life, but what my wife and I saw this day makes me question the reality that we live in. We were in Northern California at the time, on our way to go see the Redwoods. We vacation around the US often, and so this was our first time driving through California. We were driving northbound along Highway 101, which runs along the coastline. If you're driving north on your left-hand side, aka west, you could look out and see the beach and the ocean. I would frequently keep looking over to my left, watching the spectacle of the waves crashing in. It's really a sight to behold, and if you ever find yourself on the beach of the west coast, it's truly worth a drive. Remember that, Highway 101. I can remember it like it was yesterday. Sunny clear skies and a beautiful afternoon. Then I noticed something that didn't quite fit the scenery that I was looking at. I saw this black shape up here over the water. At first, I thought it was the shape of a seagull since there are tons of coastal aquatic birds around the area. But I noticed the shape didn't quite fit that of a typical bird. And it was beyond much larger than what I would expect. Whatever it was that was flying in the air, I had zero perception of how high it was above the water. It was flying at an angle though, heading north, but northeast, so it was slowly coming in our direction while still aiming north, meaning that eventually this thing would fly directly overhead if it kept on its path and we would intersect. If it continued to fly and slowly got closer and closer when I pointed to my wife and said what kind of bird is that? She looked over and was just as clueless as I. I feel terrible for admitting that I should have spent more of my time looking at the road than I did this thing, but it was such an anomaly to me that I couldn't quite help it. A couple of minutes of watching this thing, it got closer and closer to where we could make out more distinctive features, like that it had large wings that was shaped like a person. There was no coloring or any sort of light emanating from this animal or what I would assume to be an animal. It was just pitch black. The closer it got, the larger it became, and we soon realized that it was much larger than any bird we know of. Of course, there was other traffic on the road, so I'm sure we were not the only ones to witness this that same day. It was in plain view for anybody and everybody to see. Nothing was obstructing our view. At one point or another, it just vanished, and we never saw it again. We're not sure where it went, or if it descended, or if it shot off in a different direction without us noticing. With me driving, I couldn't keep my eyes on it 100% of the time, so I would just keep quickly glancing over at it. And between the last glance, it was gone. It sparked hours worth of conversation between my wife and I on what it could have been. Later on, pulling on our laptop, we tried to look at anything that would remotely resemble what we saw. And that's for the first time when we saw a picture, or should I say silhouette, of the Mothman. I don't know anything about this supposed Mothman, 
but I do know that the silhouette of this thing, a big husky looking black shape with large wings, is almost identical to what we saw. Even with the sun shining and the broad daylight, there were still no features, only discernible darkness. But the shape is exactly what I saw and remember it being. I don't know if there's any correlation, but my wife stumbled upon it and showed me and said that it is an interesting match. My wife and I have pretty firm beliefs and roots in science, being agnostics and all, but I feel it's important for everybody to always try and keep an open mind if presented with new information that will change my beliefs. This has been one of those events in my life that makes me question what I know, because there is certainly no explanation for what we saw. We have not talked to anybody else about our experience. My best friend and I were chased by something. What? I'm not sure. I can tell you it looks like a giant hideous bat from hell that latched itself onto the top of my car and held on for some time before finally flying off into the night. It even tried to shove its clawed hand in my window and grab at me. It still stands as one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever endured in my life and I'm a person who has survived ample emotional and physical abuse as a child. The fear that I experienced from this doesn't even come close to my childhood recollections. Years back, my friend and I were doing a little bit of road tripping since I had saved some money and we were wanting to see some parts of the East Coast and around that area. Originally, I'm from the Pacific Northwest. I've made a lot of friends via online gaming, so, we thought it would be fun to visit up with them and just crash at their house instead of hoteling and spending a lot of time sleeping in our car when we could. At this point in our trip, we were going through Missouri and I want to say we were in the Mark Twain National Forest if I remember correctly. After a while, all the woods in the country starts to look the same. I'm not exactly sure what happened because my friend and I put our GPS to one of my friend's coordinates and somehow the GPS must have rerouted us because we went in the total opposite direction and were wandering around in the forest around one in the morning, trying to find out where we were and where were we supposed to go. Yes, the National Forest is a beautiful place to be, but when you're by yourself, tired and stressed, and you're the only person around for miles, well, besides my friend, it's not exactly the funnest. The GPS told us we were supposed to take this one lone road, but we did, and it seemed like it kept rerouting us. I was getting flustered, and so was my friend, so we were going to try and loop around to see if we can get back to the same way we came. Let me explain to you that we were the only people out on the road at this time, as we did not see another pair of headlights for well over an hour. We were driving, and he was fiddling with the GPS, trying to get it working properly. My brights are on, and so I can see pretty much everything in front of me. And that's when I see these two glowing dots getting closer to us. I realize these dots are a pair of eyes, and then I start to see the shape that they are attached to, and I begin screaming dramatically. For a split second, I thought it was a bat, but then I realized it was easily five to six times larger than your typical bat and its face was much more hideous. It looked like a demon bat, if I had to tell you what I thought, and it was much bigger than I. It flew right at our car and landed on top of the vehicle. I could feel it, the weight pressing down on the car and holding onto the roof while we're going about 50 miles an hour, trying to swerve across the road and knock it off the car. My friend and I are screaming, oh God, oh God, at this thing and it sticks its nasty arm in the driver's side window, nearly grabbing for my face. As I take a sharp swerve to the left into the oncoming lane, it pulled its arm out quickly to try and rebalance itself. Thank goodness there was no other oncoming traffic during this. I sped up to around 80 miles an hour and slammed on my brakes as hard as I could. I was driving so erratically trying to get this thing off of our roof that I'm surprised I did not flip the car once. I could feel the weight come off the vehicle as soon as it left and flew off. My friend and I just kept driving for hours, amped up on adrenaline and fear, not knowing what just happened to us 
and trying to process what that was. We ended up driving for a few more hours, stopping at a gas station to get a couple of monster energy drinks and pushing through until morning until we could find somewhere to crash. I certainly was not going anywhere near the forest we just came through with whatever the hell that thing was. This was just a couple of months ago. I was driving along Interstate 80, probably about 100 plus miles outside of Chicago, heading west. It was evening time, fairly dusky, and since I was facing away from the sunset, the night looked rather darker than usual. Out on my passenger side, I make out what I can see as two yellow eyes flying directly towards my vehicle. Whatever this was swooped down so quickly towards my windshield that I almost swerved into the other lane, but it shot up within inches, it felt like, of my car. I yelled loudly, what was that? Obviously, I said a lot more colorful words than that when I just told you, but for the sake of the story, I'll censor it, because it was quite vulgar. Then, I see the same large shape fly off in the same direction it came. I have no idea what it is that I saw, but nothing can mistake those two large eyes that I saw, or what I believe to be eyes. They were almost a piercing artificial yellow. I wish I can give you a more accurate shape other than the body and two large wings. I have no business with these kinds of things, since I work for a private insurance firm. I'd really prefer if you kept my credentials private and didn't mention my name or where I was from. Whatever it was scared the living daylights out of me, and I had to pull over and take five outside my car with my cigarette. While I was out smoking, I checked my car for damage, and luckily there was none. I don't think whatever kind of bird it was hit my car. Then again, I don't know if it was a bird or not. Do birds have big glowing yellow eyes like that, that are larger than me? It freaked me out, and I don't know if this fits in any category that you know of. I kept it to myself because I thought I was losing it, and I didn't want anybody else to think I was crazy or having some bizarre hallucinations. That is until around mid-May, when one of my childhood friends Sam has dinner with me and shared her experience with what I believe to be the same thing I saw. Her sighting occurred near her home, where it landed on her roof and tried to break into her house from what she described. She even called the police, and by the time they arrived, this thing was long gone. She has a portion on her house where she has a large sunroof or window on her roof, and this thing was peeking in, trying to break through the glass. She told me it was the most terrifying and horrifying thing that she's ever had happen to her. I was so shaken by her testimony myself and can feel her fear that I decided to open up about what I saw only a few weeks prior to this dinner. She lives just outside of Chicago to the north in a larger, more sparser neighborhood. There's not as many houses packed together, so it's not a tight little suburb like you'd expect. After exchanging testimonies, we believe that we saw the same thing. The only thing she brought up with that she believes it could be was the Mothman, which fits the description of what she and I explained. I don't know anything about that stuff, as I said already. So this was news to me, but I thought you might find this interesting. Look, I'm just trying to live my life as normal as possible, and if I don't think about these things, then maybe I won't have to worry about them happening again, and I can just leave this all in the past where I want it to stay for good. Since I'm going to tell this anonymously, I'll just come out and say it. I'm a raging alcoholic. I live within walking distance of a convenience store that sits at the edge of town, and my trailer sits at the edge of country. Walk over two hills on a dirt road, past an old cemetery, and boom, I can buy all the booze I want. I'm single, and my place is paid for, so I got nothing but beer money. I'm questioning though, how many of the things I see when I'm borderline unconscious are true. I've seen a few strange things while walking home with another load of canned happy. Not the least of which was something that involved an old cemetery. None of the people there are my family. 
I don't know if there are even any surviving family of anybody buried there. But once in a while, usually with the help of some chemical assistance, I'll lean on the low stone fence and contemplate how soon I'm going to drink myself to death. I don't BS myself. I know that I'm on the path it is very unhealthy. I just don't have very many reasons to care. Dead in job, divorced, nobody to worry about pleasing except thyself. And the only thing that really pleases me anymore is drinking. So I was going through this line of thinking one evening as I was walking home with another 24 pack. I felt like the act of walking was making the booze absorb faster and I needed to hold still if I didn't want to vomit up all that hard-earned brew. The only way in and out of the cemetery is through a large wrought iron gate where there appears to be two stone cobblestone pillars, each having a small gargoyle sitting on top of them. I guess it's to ward off evil spirits and potentially wayward drunks. That particular night, I was in tears thinking about my ex-wife and I was pouring my heart out to the closest gargoyle. Anybody or anything that would listen to me, I guess. I was too ashamed to pray, so I settled for a piece of stone. I kid you not, I swore that I saw the tail flick. It was the freakiest thing in the world. I stared and waited for it to do it again, but it wouldn't. I forgot about whatever I was crying about in the moment and stumbled back and forth between the two sculptures to see if there were any observable differences. My vision at the time was swimming, so I didn't see anything at the time, but it stuck in my mind that I had seen movement from one of them. On another night, I had drunk myself so far into oblivion without blacking out. I made myself a bet. If I didn't survive one more case of beer, I would blow my brains out. I found the revolver that used to be my father's, putting a single bullet. I guess I was thinking about Russian roulette at the time. I made it to the store, able to buy more beer, and walked back home. As I passed the cemetery, I took out the revolver and waved it around. And then it occurred to me, see if the gargoyle would move. I rolled the cartridge into place and pulled the trigger, waiting to spray the stone, and didn't really expect anything to happen. But just as sure as I'm telling you this story, the bullet hit the gargoyle right between the eyes, and that's when I started to see this thing begin to move before me, as if its skin became different and it started to shift and come alive. Terrified, I ran for my life, that night, I tried to turn things around, throw away the gun, throw away the beer, and live my life differently. I knew I was intoxicated, or at least to a degree, but there's no amount of drunk that can make you see that. In fact, witnessing that sobered me up pretty quick, and it terrified me. Now, I avoid the liquor store, and even though I'm an alcoholic, I'm trying to do my best to go cold turkey, but I know how well that ends up for people. I don't go anywhere near that cemetery now. Was it a freak act of my imagination? Possibly. Or did I truly see something beyond this realm of world? I'm a hitchhiker. I try to be responsible. I look after myself until I absolutely must ask somebody for a ride. I've gotten through most of my life by myself this way, so why bother being hasty to bring another person on board? I was near a campground in North Carolina, walking along a narrow frontage road. I spotted what I thought was a rusty colored dog in the middle of the road, checking out some potential roadkill. I thought the dog must have just been hungry. It looked no larger than your average beagle, and the thing stood up on its hind legs and looked at me. That was right then when I could see I wasn't dealing with any kind of dog. Actually, I couldn't have told you what I was looking at. 
Its legs and arms were thin and wiry, but its body was different. It was like I was looking at a large bat. But the head wasn't anything like a bat. It almost kind of resembled a gremlin Halloween mask. Mischievous and disproportionate. It also wasn't smiling. It appeared to glare at me, with eyes that were cloudy and yellow. It swayed side to side, sizing me up as either source of food or trouble. It then lowered its head, as if to hunch its vertebrae. It began to stalk away from me, not taking its eyes, moving at a perpendicular angle. I had to get a closer look, though I didn't have any idea how to get near it without scaring it. So, I began calling to it like a cat, and then it spread two fleshy tattered wings that I hadn't noticed before. They looked dried out and kind of like a bat's. It began moving at a faster clip towards the low wooden fence that marked the border of the campground. I kept trying to talk to it, thinking it was some unknown species of bat I'd never seen before. Or maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't know what the hell this was. But at the time, I wasn't exactly scared, more intrigued and curious at what I was looking at. It began to flutter and drift, moving faster than it would walking, but not fully committing to taking off in flight. I was getting desperate, although I wasn't sure why, but I wanted to get a closer look at this little thing. It stayed about 10 feet away from me, no matter how I called or sped up. It led me to a vacant clearing surrounded by trees and tall grass as it stood on the top of a dirt mound and finally turning around to face me. It showed me crooked, pointed teeth. Its cloudy eyes had a subtle glow to them that I could see even in the daylight, and I was pretty sure that I also saw a small puff of smoke coming off of it, like it was heating up or something. It was bizarre. At this point, I really began to question what I was doing, that this wasn't some unknown species of bat that I should try to chase down. Just as I was thinking about that, it just vanished. Just as I was about to try and remember the brand of tequila that I had to drink the night before, I noticed a large black and bronze plaque that had been erected near the bare patch of earth I was standing on. It was an explanation of the history of the devil's tramping ground, a circle where nothing would grow, as supposedly the devil himself was said to frequent the circle and pace as he plotted against humanity. I'm leaning more towards the tequila as being the rational explanation for what I saw. But last I checked, even LSD that I've taken nearly 20 years ago didn't give me that strong of a hallucination. So, what is it? Did I really have an encounter with some sort of demon? Could this have truly been the devil's messenger? What's your take on it? I'm an avid bird watcher, and I never get tired of birds, no matter how often I see the same ones over and over. I even use high-powered binoculars wherever I go. I appreciate birds that hold still long enough for me to get a decent look at them. Buzzards and similar soaring birds are my favorite, just because they glide slowly enough to be observed in flight. They have a whole different energy when they're in motion like that. I came across a funnel of vultures that were passing the time riding thermals up into the sky. I was delighted, and I raised my binoculars to the sky. They were turkey vultures, hideous and majestic at the same time. But my trance was broken by a commotion at the top of the funnel. Among their black shapes was something bigger and more lightly colored. It seemed to be harassing the vulture closest to it. Its movements, although quick, were able to keep a stable view of its challenge. It looked to be every bit the size and shape of a young adult human being, but its hands and feet appeared to be anything but human. If it were covered in feathers, they were gray and white, 
marking its tiny black eyes, standing out starkly as two little pinpricks of darkness. Strange as yet was its mouth, a round circle, making its face look like a feathered gas mask. Its wings resembled an eagle's, and its feet had terribly long scythe-like talons. The vultures seemed unsure how to deal with this intruder. The thing managed to bag one of them, and it flew off with its writhing and squawking catch. Once it was out of my sight, I began digging up anything and everything I could find about cryptids, and nothing remotely matches what I saw. It wasn't the Mothman, Thunderbird, Jersey Devil, anything. It was a beady, black-eyed, circle-mouthed nightmare. Please, help me identify this strange, bizarre creature. And if you could, maybe you could read this to your listeners, so maybe I could have some help identifying what exactly I saw. Thank you for your time. I had my hand at hunting with some family in Idaho for the first time years back when we were attacked by these giant, hairy ape things that threw rocks at us. I had never been to an area that we went before and were hoping to possibly out hunt each other. I went into a deeper area of the woods than my cousins did, and that's when we started to notice things around us changing. First, it was what I can describe as markers. I'm talking about uprooted trees, bent, twisted, and curved in arches or just ripped off in the middle in certain spots. We really weren't sure what to make of it, but then the feeling of the woods itself had changed. It went from peaceful to dreadful. That was all before we started to notice a weird thudding sound, following rocks being tossed and thrown in our direction. Before thinking there were other hunters in the area, trying to play cruel tricks on us and boot us out as we were descended upon by these large, hairy ape creatures from the trees. Look, I know we've all heard of Bigfoot before, but something in my gut tells me that Bigfoot doesn't have wings and tries to swoop down at you. I've heard stories from other hunters in the town that I grew up in with encounters of large, upright walking apes or hairy beings that lived deep in the thicket. I never really believed in them, but to have an experience like this is something else. Were these Bigfoot that we encountered? They had large black wings, and their faces kind of resembled that of Alf. A short snout, ugly mother effers, sunken in black eyes, covered from head to toe in long black hair. Needless to say, we were treated from the area as these creatures pelted us with small rocks. And before you respond back to this email, asking me a million questions, I'll answer it all quickly for you. I don't know. I don't know why they were there, what they were, and were they Bigfoot? I have no answers. We didn't ask. We were treated and left it as just that, that we must have accidentally invaded some unknown animal's territory. I feel like that's really the only way to sum it all up, because if I spent too much time dwelling on it and all the what-ifs, I would go crazy. I wanted to send you this because you might know what it is that we ran into in that neck of the woods. You seem to be knowledgeable and an expert on all these monsters and whatnot. I used to live in eastern Washington state where I raised goats for a living. I'm apprehensive to tell you what I'm going to tell you because you might think I'm crazy. In fact, I know many will think I'm crazy but there is truth to my story. I'm even debating finishing this and sending it, but it's probably for the best. One time in the evening, I saw some sort of unidentified thing grab my goat out of the sky and carry off with it. Now, I know it sounds ridiculous, but not even I could rationalize what I had seen. This huge hairy bat-like winged creature descended down from the trees nearby and grabbed my goat with these large like ape hands and what looked to be huge hairy arms and flew off over into the other area of trees. I didn't have my rifle on me, so in trying to shoot it out of the sky wasn't an option in the moment. It happened so fast I didn't even have time to process what it was I was witnessing. Our back area is surrounded by older woods and whatever this creature was 
came from that general area. I had grabbed my rifle after it took my goat and pursued it a couple of miles into the backwooded area, but never found a thing. No trace or sign that there was anything out of place. I don't know what it was, and I don't know what took my goat. I know bats don't get that big, but this thing had long legs and arms like it might walk upright, or best I can describe as kind of monkey or apish. I only saw it briefly, but I know damn well that nothing is supposed to look like that with large bat wings. Is it possible that Washington State is home to large carnivorous bats that inhabit the forests? I've asked around in my circle of friends of large bats in the state, and nobody I know knows what on earth I'm talking about. I haven't had any issues with anything in the like since this has occurred. I keep my goats much closer to my home now, and I don't let them wander off near as far for fear that more of these beings will come and take my goats. I just wish there were more people that had these types of experiences. I feel alone, being the only one I've ever heard of dealing with this kind of creature. This email ended up much longer than what I had hoped for, so sit back and buckle up and enjoy what I have to tell you, because it wasn't enjoyable for me to experience. Anyway, when I went camping with a couple of friends a few summers back, I believe I experienced a Bigfoot, but I know that Bigfoots don't fly and have wings, so I'm not exactly sure what this falls under. I'm aware of Bigfoot's existence, and my family has had a few run-ins with them here and there. I didn't necessarily have a personal run-in with one of these things, but I did hear a sound that I would want to believe is a Bigfoot, but maybe not. I think it was more shocking for my friend, who apparently encountered this thing, and being a non-believer. That changed that night, for sure. We went camping up around Mount St. Helens for the weekend to party a little bit and to let loose. Our day-to-day -day jobs and life in general was just getting too stressful, so we needed a good getaway. The camping trip turned out normal for the most part, until nightfall. We were all getting ready to crack open some beers when we heard this earth-shattering scream off to the east of us in the timber. We all looked confused and unsure of what we had just heard. We started talking that it kind of sounded like a really large bat, but we were unsure. It creeped us out, but we quickly forgot about it and had some fun hanging out by the fire and drinking some good beer. Washington State, for those of you that don't know, is home to some great microbrews, so we were enjoying trying all different kinds. The night went on fairly peacefully and we were getting ready to retire to our tents to get some sleep. My buddies went in their tents after taking a piss and brushing their teeth, and I retired to mine. I wasn't quite ready for bed yet. I hadn't drank enough to shut my brain down, so I thought I would sit on my phone for a little while in my sleeping bag. I was lying there on my phone, dinking around on some games. I don't think it was long before I had heard some of my buddies snoring in their tent. I guess that's what happens when you drink too much. I like to stay on the conservative side of drinking so I could actually enjoy myself, but to each their own. After listening to my friends snore, I realized there was no cricket sounds like there was earlier. The night was completely silent, except for loud snoring. I began listening closely, and I could not hear any life outside. No crickets, no sounds, no wind even. That was odd to me, but I didn't think anything about it. I checked my phone, and it was around 11.49 p.m. Hoping I could fall asleep soon. Boom! I heard this massive thundering crashing sound from not far away. It shot me right up from my sleeping bag. I turned on my phone's flashlight, quickly looking around beyond my tent to see if I could spot anything. It was dark, and there was nothing. The woods were still, dead and quiet. The only light was the dull, dead glowing embers off the fire that we had had earlier. It straight up sounded like a boulder or something falling out of the sky and crashing into a tree. It was so loud. So I was starting to freak out. I sat there for a moment with my phone's flashlight just shining out towards the darkness, as if expecting to see something in the three or so light of feet that I had. Maybe in hindsight, 
I was just waiting for peace and quiet to feel reassured. That's when I heard that bone chilling scream again. It sounded like a very loud, deep bat, kind of. That's the closest I can think of something that would match its timbre and tone. It too was incredibly loud. I could feel the vibrations from it in my chest. My friend, who was once snoring away, is shouting my name in a hushed whisper. I'm trying to call out to him and ask if he had heard what I had just heard. He says yeah, that it woke him up. What in God's name is that? Some sort of dying animal? And I told him I had no idea, but it's freaking me out and I don't have any desire to go and find out. But I did have one problem. I had to piss like a horse before a race and I had zero bottles in my tent, or otherwise I would have just pissed in it and called it good. My good friend, bless his heart, likes to think he's brave, but a lot of the time, I think he's just a dumbass. Little did I know, he's like, I'm pissed. I was having a dream about my ex, and that stupid screeching woke me up. Let's go show it who's boss. I brought my 45 with me, and it's got a bullet that's looking to kill. I told him you're crazy for going out there in the middle of the night without much light at all and looking for the source of unknown noise. I think he was still partially intoxicated. I'm not sure. I, on the other hand, was 100% sober before I even went to bed as I like to drink beer for enjoyment and don't care for being drunk. While there was a pause in conversation, I thought maybe if I went out there a little with him it might be a good chance for me to go piss on a tree or something. My other two buddies who remained asleep during this somehow were still snoring away. They brought some hard liquor and were passed out. I don't even think that Mount St. Helens erupting a second time would have woken those two up. I really didn't want to go out there into the darkness, but I needed to pee and someone had to accompany my idiot friend who thought he was going to play hero. So I felt obligated. I stood up out of my tent and was met with him outreaching his hand to pull me out of the tent. I told him I didn't need help getting out. I was just fine. He kind of laughed, thinking I was drunk or something. He too had his flashlight in his hand and his big 45, aka hand cannon in the other. I told him, geez, do you really need to bring that bazooka out here? Wouldn't a handgun been enough? He looked down at his weapon and explained a handgun ain't gonna stop a bear. This will. I should have reasoned with him more to not bring such an overpowered weapon to a simple camping trip, but this man practices his shooting almost daily and is an incredibly good shot. He might have had his moments of stupidity, but he knew what he was doing, especially when handling extremely powerful and dangerous weapons. I think he might have gotten a little too cocky as I recall asking him if he's too intoxicated to be handling a firearm. He told me he was fine, to which I just responded, whatever. The woods were still silent, and I pointed him to the tree that I was going to piss on, probably about 20 feet away from his tent. He nods and points in the direction of the sound we heard earlier, saying, I'm gonna go that way and see what I can find. If it really was a boulder falling out of the sky, we would probably see it. I stumble over to the tree with just my phone flashlight as I hear my friend quietly walking over off into the darkness. I pull it out and begin to mark this tree as my own. Don't think I was brave. I was paranoid as hell looking around. I hadn't heard a noise like that and I was very, very spooked. My friend seemed very blinded by bravery, thinking that because he had a flashlight and a magnum, he was indestructible. He trails off into the trees, enough to where I can't see him as much. He keeps stopping and looking around frantically, but it doesn't look like he's finding much of anything. I zip my pants back up and head back for my tent. When I go to get into my tent, I just get this incredible feeling of guilt that I should go and grab my friend and bring him back to his tent. I'm sure he's still partially intoxicated. As a friend, it's my duty to ensure he's not doing stupid stuff, especially with a high-powered weapon. I remember cursing his name because I didn't want to walk out 100 feet 
with a dinky flashlight on my phone to grab his stubborn ass, but my stupid consciousness wouldn't just let me go and crash out like I wanted. Regretfully, I just started walking over towards him, calling his name out and asking if he had found anything. He wasn't responding. After maybe a minute or two, or three of walking through the trees, I walk up next to him as he's intently shining his flashlight around up in the trees looking for any signs that point to a source of the crashing noise. I asked him if he had seen anything yet, and he just looks at me, puts his finger to his lips in a shushing motion. I'm curious too now. We're both looking around. Nothing. The woods are still dead silent though, and it's pretty spooky. He's shining his light all around, but nothing. We're not seeing a damn thing. Neither of us could really shake the intense feelings of being watched, so much so that it was overwhelming. I motioned for him to just give up and turn around. Let's head back to the tent, since there is clearly nothing out here to see. He wouldn't budge. He just kept looking up in the trees and all around us. It was almost like he was in a trance. It was bizarre. After a minute or two of trying to get him to just come back to the tent and go to sleep, I said screw it and walked back myself. Literally, I'm three feet from the tent and about to unzip to get in, and I hear him scream bloody murder. Boom! He fires a shot, and then I hear the most screeching loud roar I've ever heard in my life. It was kind of like if you took a lion's roar and combined it with a bat and put it through one of those massive loudspeakers you'd see at a big amphitheater. My stomach at that very moment sank to the bottom of my feet. He comes sprinting back in my direction, and I'm screaming, what the hell happened? In one solid motion, he runs towards me and leaps around me into the truck, grabs his keys, and starts it up. Now I'm freaking out, chasing after him, hopping in the truck, yelling at him, are you crazy what's going on? You can't just leave our other two buddies here. He puts it in drive and floors it out of the area. He's just gunning his truck as hard as he can, flooring it on primitive roads and gravel, and I'm trying to calm him down and get him to stop, but he wouldn't even acknowledge me. I'm screaming at him that he has to go back. You have to go back and grab our friends and all of our stuff. He turns to me and screams a few choice words that I won't repeat. I don't know how long this went on for until he made it to a more paved road area. We had been in the car for a minute at this point. I couldn't give you an exact estimate of time, but he just stops the car, puts it in park. Eyes wide and trembling, gripping the steering wheel so tightly, I thought he was going to tear it off. With how fast he was going through all that gravel and brush, I'm surprised he did not total the truck or bust an axle. I'm still freaking out at him, screaming what is going on. We have to go back. What are you doing? Are you crazy? He finally turns to me and says quietly, and I'll never forget this moment. You couldn't pay me enough to go back there and face that thing. I'm scared. I'm terrified. I have no idea what is going on and what the hell he's talking about. I want you to understand that this is two grown men in our shirts and boxers. He still has his 45 in one hand, and his other hand is gripping the steering wheel. I thought he was on the verge of a mental breakdown. I had never seen him like this. We're sitting in his truck in the middle of nowhere in the night, on an older paved road, out in God knows where. He literally just drove through a hall. He literally just drove through. He literally just drove through half gravel, half fort. He literally just drove through half gravel, half forced, and I'm trying to process what the hell had just happened. He all of a sudden opens his driver's side door and just bolts off into the night. Here I am screaming at him, screaming his name. Where are you going? Come back. I'm screaming and yelling, and nothing. Listen. I know this might sound totally outlandish, but I swear this is what happened. The truck is still running, and now I'm freaking out, because I don't know what the hell to do. All my stuff is back in my tent, so there's nothing I can do. After sitting for a minute, I realize the only thing I can do is try to look for him, 
so I hop over to the driver's side and start to drive up and down this road, looking for him, calling his name in the direction that he ran. But he's nowhere to be found. I sure as hell was not going to go out and trek in the middle of the woods and just my boxers. I'm on the verge of a breakdown myself. I don't know what was going on. We just went from hanging out and having a great time to him seeing something, hearing a roar, firing a shot, and running like a maniac into the truck and flipping out. I had no explanation for the scream we had heard either. At this point in the night, that was the last thing I was thinking about. After driving back and forth, I was just going to try it and go back to our campsite and grab everything and my friends, tell them what happened, and call a ranger to come help us. This was far too much for me to handle. Turns out that my friend was driving so hard through the brush and off the beaten road, he did damage his axle slightly. Luckily, we weren't far off from where we were camping, and without totally breaking down, I was able to make it back to where our camp spot was. Both of my friends were outside, freaking the hell out, wanting to know where we went. I explained the story to them, that my friend, which, by the way, if you haven't noticed, I have purposefully not been naming any of their names out of protection for their identity. He saw something off in the woods, heard something, ran into his truck, bolted off into the night, and went crazy. In a blur of a frenzy, we just threw everything in the bed of the truck and got out of there so fast to go looking for our friend. I don't think I've ever in my life packed up camp so quickly but we somehow managed to pull it off. We jumped back in his truck and took off towards the main road we were just at prior. I don't recall a moment of calm or relaxation at all during this entire tenure. It was stress, worry, anxiety, every negative emotion you can muster into a few hour time span. So much so that I kind of blacked a lot of it out, to be honest. We get back to the road and get out of the truck and start calling and yelling for him but we don't hear from him. I think we drove the next couple of hours around looking for him until we decided to give up and get a ranger to come help us like I wanted to originally. I could bore you with more drawn out details for our failed search for our friend, driving around all night and calling for him with little to no sleep, stress and worry about what we all endured the night prior, but I'll spare you those. Fast forward to hours later, and we were able to get a hold of a park ranger. We explained the situation, only mentioning that our friend went crazy, was armed, and took off into the woods in the middle of the night. We had been searching for him for hours and never found him. Moving forward again, we eventually found him in the early morning hours, just as the sun was coming out, about three miles or so where he originally ran off at. When they found him, he was in a state of shock, panic, and acting as this man had completely lost it. Huddled up against the base of a tree, whispering nonsense to himself and holding his gun and rocking back and forth. He was transferred to a hospital but was released the following day because he checked out just fine, because he might have experienced a total emotional and mental breakdown. He had gone through a complete psych eval but improved his condition within the time there. When prodded with questions and trying to find out what was going on, he just kept talking about a giant bat. I know, confusing. Nobody could really get more information out of him at the time. Skip ahead again, about a month later, and none of us had really talked to him. We all just kind of thought he lost it and went off the deep end for a while. Well, when I finally got the chance to have a real conversation with the man again, I wanted to know what happened. I needed to have some closure on the events that night. I feel like for the first time, he was really able to tell me what he experienced and said that it forever altered his life. He said when I had left, off to a pocket of trees he somehow missed with his light was what he explained to be something from hell. I asked him what he meant by something from hell. He shrugged and wouldn't even look at me. I'll never forget his tenseness and demeanor changed almost instantaneously, so much so that I could see his skin crawl from five feet away. I begged him to elaborate, saying that it resembled this nasty, humongous, hairy bat. He just said it was a demon that he knew was going to come for him and take him away. He said it was watching him intently, and he knew that it meant nothing but harm. 
he fired a shot at it and it flew off in his direction. He explained that whatever this thing was had massive teeth, claws, and was enormous in size, bigger and taller than him, had glowing red eyes that pierced into his soul, and even said that he felt like it was trying to talk to him telepathically to tell him how it was going to get him. Once he fired that shot at it, he swears he hit it, but it flew off in his direction, which is why he ran. How or why it didn't grab him, he has no idea. At the moment, I consider this to be the ramblings of a possible schizophrenic having a hallucination. I hate to be that way, but what he was explaining to me was just so far removed from any reality I knew and lived in. The only problem here is that I too heard the howl, that scream, whatever he was talking about. It was loud, and it didn't sound like any animal I'd ever heard of. I really don't have a way to explain what it was, but it did sound somewhat like a raspy deep bat. I'm not exactly sure, but I can tell you it terrified me in that moment that it occurred. I have no way to explain it. I don't know how to justify what happened, but he truly believes that what he saw is what he saw, and it was real. And what he saw is the thing that made the sound. We actually didn't spend a whole lot of time on the subject because I can tell that it really shook him up bad. Which, again, to me was very odd. This was a guy who would do extreme things and was never bothered by much. If someone like him reacts this way, it just kind of told me there really was something there. I mean, I know he's not totally insane. We both heard the screams. As for my other two friends that attended the trip, they didn't hear a damn thing. They were only awakened by all the commotion of us taking off the first time. They didn't see anything. I wish I had more to tell you, something concrete and conclusive, but I don't. Just that what we experienced, we can't explain. Whatever my friend went through shook him so badly that I hadn't been able to do anything in the outdoors with him since and it's kind of just changed his personality. I'm still not sure how I feel about all of it. I guess I'm still skeptical, but my mind just keeps going back to that horrid sounding scream. Maybe there's truth to what he said. Maybe there is such a thing as hell, and this is where that thing came from. I don't normally give thought to things that are outside of my reality, but maybe it's time I start. Sorry for the long story, just wanted you to hear my experience.